Romans 8th chapter, verse 28. I will not be before you alone. That is an assurance today. Amen. And the Bible says these simple words. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to them who are called according to his purpose. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. We ask you, Lord, to be with us today. Help us understand your words so that we can live a better life in you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. I just want to talk to you today uh, on the subject, everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. Now, I'm not talking about and just the uh, absolute world being, which we do know that there is, there is a purpose for all things. But in this particular case, I want to talk to you specifically about you. Amen. I, I want to uh, remind us that sometimes we think we go through things and we think that there's no rhyme or reason. Uh, we think that uh, when we go through heartache and we go through pain that there is nothing that is, uh, that is going to come out of it, that there is no purpose for it. But I am here to tell you that everything that you deal with in your life is for a purpose. Whether it be for growth in you or for helping of growth in someone else, there is a reason why there is, uh, why you go through what you go through. And the Bible lets us know in this scripture today that all things work together for good. All things, all things, all things. Now, I do have to deal with this particular part before I go into the, the, the necessities of what I want to deal with. There is, uh, there is some things here that we have to understand, okay? Um, number one, this verse does not come without some uh, uh, some things that you have to be aware of. Number one, it does tell you that it's for these who love the Lord. This is not for everybody. If you don't love the Lord, then this is not for you. In fact, this whole message is not for you. And if you love the Lord, then you know that you are called according to his purpose. And we need to understand that this is what this is about. Because, see, there's a lot of people out here living for their own purpose and not living for hours. It's kind of like that, that treadmill that some of y'all got at your house. You bought it for the purpose of walking and exercising and losing some weight and getting fit. However, it has become a glorified clothesline. You put your clothes on it uh, because of the fact you don't feel like hanging them up right now. And I hang them up uh, when I get up in the morning and them clothes are still there about two weeks later, them same clothes that you meant to hang up that morning. And the purpose was for you to lose weight, but you ended up having another purpose. There's a lot of us that are made uh, to do one thing, but we have steered our lives to do something different. We have steered our own lives to make a different purpose for us. Sometimes it's our purpose is we, we have made the purpose of getting more money. And I'll do whatever it takes to get more money. Some of us, we, want our, we put our lives into raising our children. And then when our children are grown, we still have a purpose of raising our children, even after they've gotten grown and gone. And I'm here to tell you that if we don't remember that we are stewards of these children, these children were never meant to stay with you forever. And I know that's a tough one for some. And y'all think pastor judging you, but no, pastor ain't judging nobody. I'm just telling you the truth. A lot of us have gotten lost in raising our kids. And then even worse, some of us married people have poured all we have into raising children. And then when they do leave, we don't know what to do with ourselves. And so we end up getting a divorce because you never established a relationship between a husband and a wife because you're so busy pouring everything to those children that have finally left the nest. So we have gotten ourselves out in our own purpose instead of going to the manual of the, 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 the creator who built you in the first place, who made you in the first place, who created you for a purpose in the first place. And that manual is the word of God. Now, I am preaching this. I am teaching this. I am giving this because we have too many people, too many churches that's preaching outside of the word. I'm not judging any church. I'm just telling you what's true. You can, get on, you can get on any television station. You can get on any YouTube channel. You can get on anything, and you can actually hear them say this. So I'm not judging. You can see for yourself. Amen. Amen. But if God's, 
if God's man, God's preacher, the one that he supposedly he has called to give you a word is going outside the word, then we got problems. We got problems. Now, I am going to talk with you specifically about the word and the word is there is a purpose for you. If you love the Lord, you are called according to his purpose. There is a purpose for you. Simple as that. The scripture actually says it right here in what we read it. And we know that all things I could go back and explain to you the verses before, but I've already preached on this. You can always go back to YouTube and take a look at those. But if you take a look at 27, it says these words. And he that searches for hearts searches the hearts, that's God, knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to what? The will of God. You see, if God has a will for you, that means your purpose should work around his will and not side of his will. And if he has a purpose for you and there is a will that he's placed on your life that he wants you to complete, then you have to understand working outside of the word is working outside of his will. And that's important to understand. That's why it's important to stick to the word. That's why it's important to understand that, yes, I am one who believes that this is God's word. I, God is number one, and his word is right up there with him. Because he, uh, he puts himself in this word so that we can understand him out in this world today. It's just like I write a letter to my son or write a letter uh, to any, either one of my sons. Now, my sons know that I'm daddy, but they know that if I write them a letter, it's important. So they look at that letter as though these are words coming directly out of my mouth. And that's how we should look at the word. This is a, these are words coming directly out of God's mouth for us to behold and understand. But now let me bring this back home to us today, because if we are called according to his purpose, then we need to understand some things. What people see outside of you is only what they see outside of you. Today, I want to use something that you look at all the time, whether it be on the back wall back there or at your house or on your arm. That is the, the mechanicalism of the mechanic mechanism of a watch. Now, most of us look at a watch. What do we do? What time is it? Okay, we find out what time it is. We don't try to figure out how this watch was made. How many of you ever looked at the watch and tried to figure out how it was made? But we know that when we look at our watch, it should give us an accurate time. Am I wrong? They've gotten so sophisticated now that even during the time change, you don't even have to change the watch anymore yourself. Because the, it will change automatically by the, the mechanism inside of the watch. Same thing with the phone. You look at the phone at a watch, same thing. No different. But let's deal with this watch for a minute. When you look at this watch, you see the hour hand, the second hand, the minute hand. You see the numbers on the wall. You see the wall. You see the face of the clock with the intent of the purpose it's made for but how many of you know that that watch had to be made in order to give you the right time? How many of you know that just, just, just that hand, that second hand and that, that minute hand and that hour hand, that's not moving all by osmosis. But there is something that is moving that watch. You see, there are parts of this watch that you don't see. You have a mainstream. A mainspring that actually, if you have a wind up, you turn that little knob on the watch and you turn it tight, that, and then it runs until it runs out. That's the mainstream. But my brain spring. These young folk don't know nothing about that, D. Because they don't know about wind ups. Your sister Banks too young for that, D. She wouldn't understand that. You have a balance wheel and you have a hairspring that will that mark the division of the time. You, you have a gear train. You know those little wheels that goes around and around in the watch that maybe some of your fancy watches may show, but you never see them in just a regular old watch. You have a barrel of which the mainspring is housing. You have a caliber, uh, the caliber which moves the hands. But then you also have either uh, in a watch a quartz, or you, uh, of course, that will uh, resonate the exact frequency that that clock should move to give you the precise time every second of every minute of every hour. 
Or some of you may on your wall have a, 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 a grandfather clock that may have a pendulum. Which also does the same thing. But all you see when you try to see what a time is, is what? The time. You see a digital time or you see the hands on the second glass move. You see, I want to show you something. Even though that clock is working according to its purpose, there's a lot behind how it's gotten to that purpose. Because the creator knew what it was going to take for that clock to move properly. Well, I want to submit to you today that in your life, God knows what makes you move correctly. He knows what makes you move perfectly. You see, you have a purpose too. And see, your friends and your family and the people at your job and the people at the church, they only see what you show. They only see the God in you. They only see the movement of love in you. They only see, as this thing here says, the kindness in you. They don't understand that it took some things that you had to go through to get to this point. You had to have a mechanism that was going to move you to this point. You had to go through some hard things in life and realize that you don't want to treat other people the way you was treated when you was coming up so that you could be better. And that maybe you could show them how it's done so they could be better. See, they didn't see all that. All they see is the God in you. All they see is the purpose in you. All they see is the preaching in you, the teaching in you, the giving in you. That's all they see. They don't see what God has done on the inside of you. You see, when the Holy Ghost came through Jesus Christ entering you, it changed everything. You was no longer just pieces sitting on the side that didn't have any governing uh, access to anything. But these pieces were now put together by the creator who created you in the first place. Are you walking with me today? And when he took your main spring to be able to get you wound up the way you needed to be, you was ready to go. When he took that balance wheel and head spring to mark the division of how you need to live this life, morning, noon, and night, and how you need to live this life at work and when you at church and when you at home, and helping you realize that even when people want to make you mad, it's the God in you that has you wound up to still give the proper purpose you were made to give, even despite them beating you up on the wall. It's kind of like Timex. Some of you have taken lickings, but you kept on ticking. Are you walking with me so far? How many of you in here has taken lickings, but still is keeping on ticking? You see, that's the thing about living in God. That's the thing about living in your purpose. When you live in your purpose, you can keep moving because there's a mechanism that guides you. There's a quartz. There's a pendulum, the Holy Ghost, that will make sure you stay on time, that you stay on point, that that you stay on the purpose that God has made for you. And we know that all things, every piece that he put together in you, every issue that you've had to deal with, every hurt and every pain that you had to endure, every circumstance that you had to face, he knew that all those things, when he placed them together, will work for good. Why? Because you love the Lord and what are called according to his purpose. My question today for you, church, is are you walking in your purpose or are you like that, that treadmill, just doing what you want to do, doing what you, what, what you never was meant to do in the first place? It is time out to do what we stop. It's time out for doing what we want to do. It's time in for doing what we're called to do. Some of you have so much more in you, but you haven't done it because you haven't figured out that you are not just by, you know, let me, there, there's, a, there, we, there's a thing that we like to say, a facade. Some of us put off good facades. And that just being a front. We put on a good front. When some of the stuff we got behind us never been put together, it's just in shambles. And that's what we got in a lot of people who have not received Christ. They know how to put on a good front. They know what to do when they're in church. They know how to raise their hands. But 
Behind it, behind closed doors, in that watch frame, pieces are broken. Pieces haven't been put together. The creator hadn't put it together because they haven't allowed the creator to. That's right. That's right. But today is your day to get it together. Today is your day to realize that everything you've gone through isn't for nothing. Don't let the stuff you've had to endure be for nothing. He's a good God. And just imagine how good you're, you can help someone else. Just imagine the stuff you've gone through in your life, how you can bestow it on someone else that feel, may feel like that they haven't gotten it together yet. That may feel like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this pain. I don't know how I'm going to get through what the doctor has told me. I don't know how I'm going to get through losing my house. I don't know how I'm going to get through not having any money. But you can tell them, let me tell you something, baby. I know what God can do. There is no secret to what he can do. What he's done for others baby he'll do it for you you can remember this thing and you can share this why because you've already lived it and those parts are together now and it is running on time the way it's supposed to are you walking with me so far you can tell them that the bible says that if you seek first the kingdom of god and all these things all these righteousness all the things that you need will be added unto you that is what god has already promised us in his word. That's all we have to remember. You can remember that the Bible says that if we we can ask whatever we ask if it's in his will we will receive. You can remember this and you can walk in this thing and you can build somebody up where, it's, where they may feel like their parts are just all over and hadn't been put together yet. Are you walking with me today? Stand to your feet church. Stand to your feet. Be, be that one to help wind somebody up. Let the Lord use you to help get their time accurate. Help get their purpose on track. Because you've gone through it and you can help another. Because all things work for good. To those who are called, love, who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. The doors of the church are open.